Hello and welcome back to Sundays at the Chateau. I would had to stop making them during Advent because I was making the Advent vlogs instead, but now I'll be back here every Sunday to answer any of your questions about Chateau life in France. And if you love Chateaus as much as I do, then please subscribe to this channel and you won't miss any of the future videos. Today I'm going to tell you all about the transformation of our winter salon, which is where I'm sitting now. A few of you have asked me to tell you about the winter salon because you saw that we were having Christmas in here. Last year we had Christmas in the Grand Salon because there were so many of us, but usually we're here for Christmas because it's the warmest, snuggest room in the house. This is the room where we all sit around the fire together, reading books, playing board games, chatting, having cocktails, having a lot of snacks before we go through for dinner. It's a very convivial room and in winter it rivals the kitchen in terms of how many people it attracts like a magnet. We're in the old wing of the chateau which dates from the 15th or 16th century. When we bought the chateau we had major problems in this room with dry rot so it smelt quite bad and there were mushrooms eating all of the wood and sadly that meant that we had to rip out most of the wooden panelling. Luckily it wasn't extremely elaborate panelling that covered all of the walls, it was quite low panelling, maybe about 50 centimetres high, but nevertheless it was pretty and, and we had to get rid of it and burn it in case it infected the rest of the house because the wood can hold the spores of the dry rot. All of the floorboards had to be ripped out and we put down the same tomette that I talked to you about in the Grand Salon video. We brought lots of old tomettes down from the attic and reused them on the main floor of the house. So although we had to have the floors put in, they look ancient and they are old terracotta tiles that were already in the chateau. So they get a feel of history. And I think when you walk in, you don't notice that the floor is new. We managed to save the bookcases either side of the fireplace and the mirror above the fireplace is also original. The ceiling is the only part of this room that we didn't touch at all. It's a plafond à la française, which means a French style ceiling, and it has the main beam and the cross beams visible. And they had already painted it in these colours and I just haven't touched it at all. One day maybe I would like to decorate a little more in between each beam, but for now there are slightly more important things on the to-do list. But when we bought the chateau, this was not a sitting room, it was a billiard room and the original billiard table was in here and in fact you can see that the lights are still the billiard table lights and we just spun them round to be able to continue using the room without the table but still keep a sense of the history of what the room used to be. We felt it was lovely to have a chateau with a billiard room and lovely to have the original table so we kept it as a billiard room for years but we never actually used it because it's a French billiard table which means that it hasn't got any pockets which is quite frustrating. I'm sure there are some people out there who love playing French billiards and who are super good at it, but there's only three balls on the table and you just sort of ricochet them off each other and we never quite grasped the rules. So it meant that this room was sitting almost unused and pretty much empty except for the billiard table for about eight years. And at the end of eight years, I just cracked and said, it's ridiculous, this room has a working fireplace and the car salon doesn't. So we'd far rather sit in here and be snug. The only thing we'd ever been using the billiard room for was photo shoots. Most parties ended up with a photo shoot near or on the billiard table. I didn't want to get rid of the billiard table, so I've just moved it next door into the grand salon. But that's still an ideal situation because it's against a wall, we still can't use it, but I don't want to sell it because it's part of the chateau. So I haven't worked out a solution for the billiard table yet. It's waiting for me to come up with an ingenious plan but we did make this lovely warm sitting room. Once we transformed it from a billiard room into a sitting room, we called it the winter salon because it's one of the warmest rooms in winter. And actually because it's rather dark, in summer we tend not to use it very much. The windows aren't very big in this room. And so we spent all of our time in the grand salon and the kitchen and actually all of the rest of the enfilade because those rooms all have doors that open out onto the terrace. Whereas suddenly in winter, this becomes everybody's favorite room, the snow room where we hang out and where we celebrate Christmas. As you can see the Christmas tree is still up behind me. It's covered in ornaments. The oldest ornament on that tree is over 30 years old and still we add more and more every year. And of course there's this beautiful mantelpiece display made by the lovely Marie. 
Oh, it's just gorgeous. It's so simple and it feels as though the forest has come into this room. And honestly, I wish it was like this all of winter. I'm going to miss it very much when we have to take the decorations down. And in France, you have to take all of the decorations down by the Feast of Epiphany, which is the Feast of the Three Kings in early January. And in France, we eat wonderful cakes. And inside the cake is hidden a little porcelain charm. And whoever wins the charm is the king or queen for the day. So it's a fun celebration and just about makes up for the fact that the decorations have gone. I wanted to make the room feel really snug and cosy, so I wanted quite dark colours, especially as the Grand Salon is light and yellow, it's very bright. I thought it would be lovely to feel a complete contrast to that, but without it being a clash. So yellow to green works very nicely, and green feels quite enveloping and makes us feel warmer in winter when we're here. I found the silk in one of the fabric silk mills in Sudbury. It's a stunning silk of silvers and greens. And I made the curtains with a shaped pelmet. And that helps a lot because they're triple thickness. I always make them with interlining. So they help to insulate the room a lot because all of our windows are still single glazed. We don't have the money to go around and replace over a hundred windows for double glazing, sadly. The green works as a great backdrop for my father's paintings. And a lot of my favorite paintings of his are in this room. Room. I tried to group together the ones that were from a period when he was using mainly browns and monochromes. My favourite is the largest painting in the room, which is over a leather sofa that I found at auction in England. And his painting quite dominates that wall of the room. It's in browns and sepias, and it's quite architectural. Whenever we went on holiday in France, he would take a lot of photos of wrought iron railings throughout cities, and then he would reimagine buildings in his paintings and create these magical cityscapes. But I like the small details. I'm quite drawn to the little flower store, but then if you look closer at the man and the woman on the bench, you can see that the man has bought flowers for the woman and she's holding them in her lap. But another woman is approaching with a pram and the woman is staring wistfully at the pram, but the man is looking at the woman pushing it. There are little funny details like that in all of my father's paintings. And hidden behind the Christmas tree at the moment, which obviously isn't usually here, are some paintings that my father made in his medieval phase, which is one of his earliest phases of painting. And they're just pen and ink, and it's extraordinary. How did he do that with pen and ink? I wish I'd inherited his talent. There's another painting of his between two of the windows leading to the courtyard side. And that's a very sweet scene where a man is handing a flower to the woman that he's with. And it's full of tenderness, which rather belies the fact that her breasts seem to be completely exposed, but somehow in their expressions, that in no way comes across. I find it quite fun. I stare at it for hours. Those of you who watch the advent vlogs will recognize my father's medieval painting, the only colorful painting in the room, which is over the desk. I love this painting so much. And I had it turned into our wrapping paper for Christmas, which worked really well. So now I'm thinking there might be other things that I can do with it as a design. So I'm going to spend some time coming up with ideas for other ways in which I can use this painting in other areas of the house. The furniture is a mismatch of things that I found a lot in secondhand shops or things that belonged to my parents or that a friend gave to me because the biggest sofa in the room was a gift from my friend Oliver. It was in the flat that we shared in London and when he moved out he asked if I wanted to keep the sofa which is great because it has lots of memories attached to it. I bought the cushions on it in Turkey many years ago on holiday in Istanbul, but the cushion in the middle is so beautiful and it was a gift from somebody who watches the vlog and it's actually of the mural in our chapel. It's such a thoughtful gift and I love it in this room. The sofa opposite it was actually a steal because I found it at the local charity shop for 30 euros which I still can't believe every time I look at it, but it's got a blanket over it because the fabric of the seat cushions is quite damaged. So I need to change that one day, but I love the fabric on the back. So I'm just keeping it for as long as possible until I have to change it. A lot of the furniture were gifts from my parents, such as these armchairs, one of which I'm sitting in right now. Also the desk, which is a little small, but we couldn't go for a much bigger one because it has to fit between the two windows. And also one of my favorite things, a little card table which opens up so that four people can comfortably play games together. And we play a lot of board games in this room, so that's very useful. Though often we just use the big coffee table. At the moment, the coffee table has lots of books on it. 
As you can see on top of the books, there's our Christmas cake, which we still haven't finished, but rather more distressingly, we haven't actually found little baby Jesus, whom we'd baked into the cake yet. So he's in the half that we haven't eaten yet. So his appearance at the nativity scene is a little late this year. I have a lot of art books because my father had a huge art library and my parents had an actual library in their home back in England. So I have boxes and boxes and boxes of books waiting to go into a library, but not enough space yet. And because I was doing the room on quite a budget, as is often the case here at Leland, I bought a big wardrobe and took the doors off and used that as my bookshelf because the wardrobes are really reasonably priced at the local charity shops. A huge wardrobe like this would cost about between 150 and 200 euros. So it's actually a very good way of being able to get extra storage into the house because these huge houses, well, they weren't built with a lot of storage, if I'm honest. And that's something that I hope to work on this winter, try to create better storage throughout the house because otherwise it's so easy for it to fall into a mess and I hate that. In front of the bookcase are a set of library steps which come from Nick's family. They belong to his grandfather who was a publisher and I think it's so important to have things from our family, from our grandparents, from previous generations that we can keep a link with the past and with the people that we've loved and memories of them around the house. A great piece of furniture in here is the globe and that's from my parents. I think they got it back in the 1970s. So it was always in my house growing up and I've had my eye on it for a long time because not only is it really good fun to just look at the globe as it spins, but if you open it, it's a bar and I can't imagine anything I would rather find when lifting a globe. So it's the perfect spot to pick up a whiskey when coming into the room. Although it's definitely still a work in progress, I would like this room eventually to be a sort of gentleman's room, a reflection of travels taken all over the world. So I've brought back things from my travels to put into this room and I will continue to do that and build it up more and more until it becomes a little more exotic and eclectic in here. But for example, on the bookshelf, there is a Burmese betel nut box, which I really enjoy. It's got tiny, tiny engravings in it. It's so beautiful and so minutely done. We have a couple of guinea fowl that my father bought in Africa. Over the doors are a couple of Chinese horses. And the bust above the fireplace was bought for me by my father. He really loved busts. Those of you who watched my video on our Grand Salon will remember that he also bought me the bust on the mantelpiece in that room. He loved beauty so much and he loved decorative objects. And we really enjoyed going to auctions together mainly to watch actually, but occasionally we'd bid on something. I would like this room to undergo another big transformation as soon as I can afford it. And that is that I would like to have the entire room shelved so that it's a proper library. As you walk in, you're surrounded by books. I have easily enough books to fill it. I just don't have enough money to make the library units yet. But as soon as I do, I will make this room cozy and snug and a place for book lovers to get away from the world, sit by the fire with a cup of tea or maybe a gin and tonic and read. I would also love to buy a huge carpet that could almost fill the room because I think that would feel even warmer. At the moment, we just have little mismatched carpets here and there. But one day, if I find a very big carpet in my price range, I'll snap it up. So like all of the rooms at La Lande, this is very much a work in progress. There are so many things that I want to do to this room. The most important is obviously turning it into a proper library, fully shelved, but also getting the large carpet to fill the floor and then finding more objects from all over the world to give a slightly exotic cabinet of curiosities feel to the room. I hope that you've enjoyed this tour of our winter salon. Please let me know what you would like me to talk to you about in future. And please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you don't miss anything else about chateaus coming up. Have a lovely Sunday wherever you are in the world. And now I'm going to go and try and free baby Jesus from the Christmas cake. Thank you.